This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 1763. Brain Fertilizer. Which exercise delivers the neurochemicals you need to thrive? By Emma Hogan of lesmills.com. And I'm Dr. Neil Malik, reading you some of the most popular health and fitness blogs out there, with permission from the websites, of course, and always with a bit of my commentary at the end. All right, and with that, I'm sure you're excited to hear which exercise helps our brains the most. So let's get right to our next article and continue optimizing your life. Brain Fertilizer, which exercise delivers the neurochemicals you need to thrive? By Emma Hogan of lesmills.com. Be more creative, improve focus, lessen anxiety, sleep better, and curb dementia risk. Sound too good to be true? Canadian neuroscientist, Dr. Jennifer Heiss, has unearthed the one type of training that delivers maximum neurological benefit and has mapped how different types of exercise nurture our minds in different ways. Dr. Jennifer Heiss is on a mission to help people understand the neuroscience of exercise. She's just written a book about it, in fact, and says there's just one thing she wishes everyone knew. That exercise gives us vitality. Quote, Exercise helps us manage the things we struggle with daily. It helps us deal with stress, ease our depression, soothe our anxiety, stay sober, alleviate insomnia, keep dementia at bay, and makes it easier for us to stay focused and be creative. All in all, it gives us the mental energy to fully engage with life. End quote. Exercise changes the brain in diverse and powerful ways. Heiss explains, quote, One key thing that exercise increases is brain-derived neurotrophic factor, or BDNF. This acts as a fertilizer to grow new brain cells and help our existing brain cells function optimally. End quote. She adds that in some cases, the power of exercise can even surpass that of genetics. Research from Heise's NeuroFit Lab has shown that physical activity levels contribute to dementia risk as significantly as one's genes. The researchers tracked over 1,600 people, and 25% had a genetic risk factor for dementia, which is representative of the population at large. At the start of the study, no one had dementia. Five years on, those who were physically inactive were as equally likely to develop dementia as those who were genetically predisposed. In other words, being physically inactive completely negated a healthy set of genes. Which exercise offers the biggest neurological benefits? Heise's recent research has demonstrated high-intensity interval training improves memory, whereas moderate continuous training does not. She adds, quote, What makes high-intensity interval training so special is that the hard intervals push you above your anaerobic threshold and lactate accumulates. Although lactate was historically considered an inert byproduct of metabolism, It turns out to be one of the most important promoters of neuroplasticity, meaning our brain's ability to adapt and adopt new behaviors. Lactate promotes angiogenesis, the growth of new blood vessels in the brain, to help ward off vascular dementia. Lactate also promotes hippocampal neurogenesis, the birth of new brain cells, to help ward off Alzheimer's, end quote. What's surprising about these new findings is how they contradict common perceptions about lactate. Heiss says, quote, We often hear fitness trainers talking about flushing out lactate from the muscles, as if lactate is a bad thing we need to get rid of. But it turns out the lactate from the muscles travels to the brain and may be one of the promoters of brain health. End quote. Which exercise can alleviate depression? Research shows that when it comes to aerobic exercises for alleviating depression, Duration matters most. Heiss advises, quote, increasing your workout duration by just 10 minutes will yield a greater antidepressant effect. Resistance exercises also alleviate depression, but here, intensity matters most. Increasing your workout intensity by just 10% will yield a greater antidepressant effect, end quote. Which types of exercise can lessen anxiety? How people respond to exercise for anxiety relief depends on whether the person is anxiety sensitive, which literally means the fear of fear itself. Heiss explains, quote, people who are anxiety sensitive get even more anxious when they experience the somatic symptoms of anxiety, such as racing heart and rapid breathing. Unfortunately, these symptoms overlap 
with the physiological effects of high-intensity exercise, end quote. Therefore, based on research, it's recommended to start off at a moderate intensity and add in short bursts of higher-intensity exercise if tolerated. What type of exercise can encourage better sleep? In general, the more you move during the day, the better you sleep at night. Studies show you can also schedule your exercise at the same time every day to help resync your biological clock. This will help you fall asleep faster. Pre-bedtime yoga sessions are shown to be particularly beneficial when it comes to improving sleep quality. Which types of exercise can improve focus and creativity? When it comes to boosting focus and creativity, Heiss says short, frequent movement breaks throughout the day are key. Research shows that interspersing five-minute high-intensity interval training breaks during a lecture improves students' focus and learning. For creativity, a 10-minute self-paced walk has shown to be enough to help promote outside-the-box thinking. Women pay heed. 70% of those with neurodegenerative disorders are women, and women also have higher rates of mental illness and other diseases. Heiss explains that women tend to be more susceptible to stress-induced mental illnesses such as anxiety and depression, and research has shown that exercise protects against stress-induced depression and anxiety in both men and women. Studies also demonstrate that women tend to benefit more from some of the cognitive benefits of exercise. This may be related to sex differences in the production of brain-derived neurotrophic factor to exercise, but more research is needed in this area. Exercise versus other treatments. While there are many mental health treatments to offer, Heiss believes that exercise really is hard to beat when it comes to mental health. Antidepressant medications work well for some, but not for all. Quote, about one in three people have drug-resistant depression, and these individuals often experience greater symptom relief from exercise than medication. End quote. Some turn to alcohol, which can temporarily alleviate stress and anxiety but you will pay for it later. Quote, Alcohol disrupts our sleep, which makes it more difficult for us to think clearly and regulate our mood over the short term. And this can aggravate anxiety and depression over the long run. End quote. Heiss explains the option of psychiatry can prove helpful, but it may not be feasible for all. It can also be difficult for some to find a therapist that they trust. She adds, quote, Fortunately, with exercise, Every workout has the potential to reset your brain by infusing it with all the neurochemicals the brain needs to thrive. Exercise can work well on its own, but also works well together with other therapies. You just listened to the post titled Brain Fertilizer, Which Exercise Delivers the Neurochemicals You Need to Thrive by Emma Hogan of lesmills.com. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. Researchers have known for years that exercise can help reduce symptoms of depression. Yesterday, we were talking about how the health of the brain may be affected by the health of the gut. Well, it turns out, exercise can actually improve the health of the gut microbiome too. But what's particularly fascinating in today's article was that we're starting to get some actual numbers, like how increasing the length of time for our walks, runs, rides, or rows by just 10 minutes can reduce depression symptoms. Or, we can achieve a similar effect by increasing the intensity of our strength training sessions by just 10%. That a 10-minute walk can boost creativity. Now, not just a walk, but a 10-minute walk. I'm all about being specific when it comes to setting goals so that we know when we've hit our target. So, I love that the data coming out now is starting to get really, really specific, which makes it easier for us to set and hopefully meet these goals and in turn, live the best life ever. All right, that'll do it for me for today. I'll be back here tomorrow for our usual Friday Q&A, so stay tuned for that, where your optimal life awaits.